The motion is, this house believes Big Pharma prioritises profits over patients. I look to Alan Petri, Secretary's Committee, to open the case for the proposition. This House believes Big Pharma prioritises profits over patients. A motion which does not require a side proposition to prove that profit should be considered a dirty word, or that pharmaceutical companies are completely indifferent to the welfare of the patient nor are we claiming that profits must inevitably come into conflict with the patient's interests. Indeed, development of certain drugs has often been driven with great impetus by the possibility of immense profits, resulting in a rare win-win scenario for both big pharma and the ordinary patient. In the, uh, overall in this speech, I'm not going to deny the great advances of modern medicine, nor negate the role big pharma has played in it. All we need to prove on side proposition is that when profits and patients come into conflict, major pharmaceutical companies prioritise the former over the latter. This is not a recent phenomenon. The US government implicitly acknowledged this problem as far back as 1983, when the Orphan Drug Act meant the taxpayer was sponsoring drug companies' research into rare diseases, as these companies otherwise had no incentive to solve the likes, to treat the likes of Huntington's disease or Tourette's, because there was no reasonable expectation of profitability. The government had to offer a seven-year market exclusivity and tax credits equivalent to half the development cost of these drugs in other words, the government had to intervene in the market in order to align market incentives with societal needs, as otherwise these drugs, which were going to save people's lives, would simply not have been developed. In my speech today, I'm first going to demonstrate to you that, in research and development, pharmaceutical companies put profits before patients. That is to say, in A, choosing which drugs to develop, and B, the results of self-funded tests that they actually choose to release. They are thinking more about the best way to make money rather than the best way to make a substantive difference to patients' lives. Second, I will scrutinise how Big Pharma has focused most of its attention on sales and marketing as opposed to actually what they are often talking about, research and development. It's important to note at this point that uh, despite the numerous sort of protestations we hear from Big Pharma about how much they invest in research and development, like the huge cost of research and development, points which I will accept as legitimate later in my speech, actually Big Pharma spends on average twice as much on marketing their products than they do on actually researching and developing them, 26% compared to 13% of their overall revenue. So this is clearly, like, even though they may consider themselves to be primarily focused on research, they are also, obviously, focusing more of their attention actually on sales rather than actually developing drugs that will save people's lives. So, uh, before I move on to introducing the speakers, I'd just like to, like to briefly say that, as well as, uh, obviously, this section of the speech, which is about um, essentially introducing, introducing you to what exactly the main problems of the drug companies are in the actual sales and marketing process, there's also a significant problem uh, with the sales, uh, with actually two things, basically. First of all, the excessive high pricing which, drugs, which these drug companies actually charge for their drugs. And secondly, scandalously, the systematic mis-selling of drugs to millions of patients across the world. I was actually personally astounded by the amount of cases there are where drug companies have been fined hundreds of millions of dollars because uh, they, sell this, they sell medicine which doesn't actually solve the person's particular issues or ailments that they're actually coming into conflict with, but just because this medicine is highly profitable. And I'll be detailing just some of these scandals later in my speech and why I think they demonstrate that profits are more important to big pharma before, than patients. Before I move on, however, it falls upon me to introduce the oppos opposition speakers this evening. Speaking first is Lali Vadlamani, a second year economics and management student at Trinity College and member of Standing Committee. I was uh, scouring around for stories about Lali to uh, share with you tonight. It proved difficult to find any, with her friends just saying she's perfect, she's perfect. So um, I did, however, find out that she does have her life goals clearly mapped out, uh, with having a, her having a new handbag in mind for every single stage of her banking career. So <laughs> perhaps it's unsurprising, therefore, to find Lali defending big corporations tonight. Second, we have Dr. Ken Powell. He founded and was the CEO of Arrow Therapeutics Limited, a specialised antiviral drug company that was acquired by AstraZeneca for $150 million in 2007. And he's now the chairman of Revival. With his over 30 years' experience in the pharmaceutical industry, I look forward to hearing what he has contributed tonight. Third, we have Jim Greenwood. He is the current president and CEO of the world's largest trade association, representing the biopharmaceutical industry. In areas such as gene therapy, sort of cell therapy and immunology, he's representing his clients who make these scientific breakthroughs. Given his clients include biotechnology companies across more than 30, 30 countries, I hope if side proposition do win tonight, he can share some of our concerns with his clients about how they are putting profits before patients. These are your opposition speakers, Mr. President, and they are most welcome.
So firstly, I'm going to show you how Big Pharma puts profits first in research and development. Here, I'm not just talking about the example I opened with, which was where drugs treating rare diseases simply weren't developed because of the lack of potential profits. Rather, I would like to highlight the problems of patent protection. The way drug companies make vast amounts of money is by taking out patents, exclusive rights, on the drugs, on the new drugs they discover. This, in many ways, is fair enough. I'm not denying like, the huge costs that drug companies actually uh, put into discovering new drugs. I know some of them can cost over one, one billion pounds and usually take 10 to 15 years. The patient then gives the drugs company the opportunity to recu recuperate the money invested and more. Indeed, incidentally, much more because the, the pharmaceuticals industry has some of the highest profit margins of any industry, being comparable only to the financial services industry. This, however, is not even, I'm not even objecting to the high profits. What I'm obje objecting to here is the problem with the incentives that patent protection provides. Basically, once a patent expires, there is no financial impetus for companies to test existing, existing medicines for new illnesses. And therefore, if, as we think on side proposition, companies uh, do not care that much about patients compared to profits, then we should expect them to, we should expect them to, not, to, to not, uh, not focus their attention on drugs which ha have actually had their patent used up. Is this the case? It is indeed. So let's look at example for the diabetes drug metformin, which a 2013 study found effective against prostate cancer, sort of destroying like, these sugar-hungry these sort of sugar cell, cancer cells. Yet ever since metformin's patents expired in 2003, even though there are at least 38 clinical trials going on, how many of them do you think are actually sponsored by drug companies? Not a single one. Because drug companies are looking, actually looking to ways to modify metformin, just so they slightly change the chemical composition so it qualifies for a new patent. We have no idea if this sort of slightly new com chemical composition will actually sort of increase the increase how good the drug is or make it worse or the, what side effects it will bring in. All we do know is it'll be good for profits because they'll have a patent on it and have exclusive rights to it and bad for patients. Two ways. First, more expensive as, all, as we talk about. This research and development is very costly so it will have to be paid for. And second, and far more importantly, the reluctance to invest in clinical trials, a potential cancer-fighting drug, could be costing lives. As I read in a Reuters article, which put it quite well, cancer patients just don't have the luxury of waiting around for derivatives of existing drugs uh, so they can be patented. The second way in which Big Farm prioritises profits over patients when developing drugs is their misleading of their clients. Half of all trial results for medicines available on the, global on the global market are not subject to public and independent scrutiny. That's just to say we have to trust the company. But surely we, we should be able to trust the company. Like it's not like they're going to actually lie to people. Uh, well, actually they have done. Like, so for example, the UK government spent five, over 500 million pounds in the last decade spot stockpiling this drug Tamiflu. Which, uh, was supposed to, which was going to be used in the event of a flu epidemic. Yet, after multiple freedom of information requests, after the company failed to release all the data about Tamiflu, it was found out that th this drug would not actually be effective against a flu epidemic, because even though it maybe slightly controlled the symptoms of it, it didn't actually uh, sort of have any effect on actually the, attacking the more severe complications of it, such as pneumonia. So therefore, there's clearly a need for greater transparency in the pharmaceutical industry, when we can't even trust them to publish all the results of their actual tests. So how is this bad, and how is this putting profits for patients? A, by charging the NHS vast amounts of money, where, which could have been spent elsewhere, over 500 million pounds, imagine how many hospitals that you've built, etc. cetera. Uh, and B, by introducing a false sense of complacency, because we were relying on this drug, Tamiflu, to actually help us in a flu outbreak. And the fact, that it, the fact that it would not have done so if there had been an outbreak, I think is morally reprehensible on the parts of the drugs companies for failing to fully inform the government on how effective this drug was. Thus, I've shown that Big Pharma, in choosing which drugs to develop, and in misleading the public and governments by releasing a limited number of test results in the area of research and development, has decisively opted for profits over the patient. Now let's examine whether profits or patients come first in the other area of the pharmaceutical industry, namely the sales and marketing of drugs. First, on the prices that drug companies charge. I was talking to the president's dad last week, actually, who pointed out that companies such as GlaxoSmithKline have actually committed to keeping their prices low uh, in very poor countries such as Afghanistan and Cambodia by not filing for patents and therefore not charging the price of exclusivity. I looked further into this. Was this some generous benevolence on the behalf of pharmaceutical companies? No, I'm afraid not. It turned out that this move would have little effect on profits, to use Director Smith Klein's words, as A, these countries can't afford to pay the high Western prices anyway, uh, and B, these countries were exempt from these patent protection rules anyway. So even though they made much deal of, oh yes, Glatzenstein made a big public announcement saying we're not going to make patents, this, they wouldn't have been able to do so anyway until 2033 by World Trade Organization rules. And finally, on the pricing issue, uh, sometimes developing countries are charged even more for the same product 
So the charity Médecins Sans Frontières found that the same pneumonical vaccine cost $58 in France compared to approximately $65 in Morocco and Tunisia. So clearly this is the case of where the same vaccine, they're charging more for the same vaccine in, in developing countries than they actually are in developed countries. So therefore the idea that Big Pharma, that we should justify them prioritising profits in developed countries in order to subsidise and prioritise patients in developing countries, it seems that they're sort of prioritising profits in both developing countries and developed countries. Now finally, on what I think is the most scandalous of all about Big Pharma, and encapsulates their focus on profits at the expense of patients, is the sort of PPI-esque mis-selling of drugs. So you, I'm sure you've heard all about PPI and how people, you can phone up a company, you know, if, if you see their television on the advert, you feel you've been mis-sold. I think this is obviously much worse than PPI, because essentially drugs companies have systematically mis-sold people drugs, and this is not only costing people money, they're putting lives at risk. So let's take the example of INSEES Therapeutics. Their highly profitable drug subsidies was only approved for use against late stage cancer pain. And they were only, but yet this same company was pressuring their staff, basically saying you will be fired unless you go out and make sure you get doctors to write more prescriptions and offer higher doses um, for ailments that it simply wasn't designed to be used against. So this is a drug which is only designed to be used against late stage cancer that ended up being used across the US for neck pain and migraines and things which obviously shouldn't be used, obviously such a strong drug shouldn't be used against. This is substance fentanyl, a substance that's 100 times more powerful than morphine, being used against neck, neck pain and migraines. And what happens when very strong drugs are used to treat minor ailments, and why, why they've got an incentive to do this because these very strong drugs are sort of highly profitable? Uh, tragically, tens of thousands of people lost their lives in this scandal, with there being over 20,000 deaths from these kind of drugs, the opioids, in 2014. Over half of them actually came from the prescription offered to them by their doctor. So I can hear, like, opposition may complain that this is sort of like an extreme case, one rogue company. But this is not, however, a one-off. Companies across the pharmaceutical industry have been similarly condemned and fined for mis-selling drugs. So the example, Cephalon was paid, had to pay $425 million to resolve claims that marketed three drugs for unapproved uses in 2008. Ellie Lilly had to pay $1.145 billion for promoting an antipsychotic drug, Zyprexa, for unapproved uses. And these mis-sellings, I'm just chugging like, huge numbers at you like the huge numbers, huge numbers that they've actually been fined, but they actually have real consequences for the most vulnerable people in society. Zyprexa was being used to treat Alzheimer's when it had in fact been only been proved against short-term schizophrenia. This obvious kind of mismatch between what has been approved to use by the drug regulator and what the what sales staff are being pressured to sell to doctors is, I think, morally reprehensible, especially as this drug may not have been, may have been totally useless or even worse than useless, offering side effects such as diabetes and weight gain. And this disgraceful practice of mis-selling doesn't even extend to like, household names such as GlaxoSmithKline. So putting aside the Chinese bribery case where essentially uh, GlaxoSmithKline representatives paid doctors uh, to promote their products, a GlaxoSmithKline was fined even more, $3 billion, for bribing doctors in the US to promote the prescription of unsuitable, untested antidepressants for children. I was amazed that this, I hadn't heard this scandal before personally, it happened back in 2012, but these drugs were unapproved for use on children, and still the company was prepared, even though they were unapproved, basically the GlaxoSmithKline was offering doctors, you know, the typical, like, what do you expect from a bribery, so sort of allowing them to go on speaking tours and paying them millions of dollars to do so, flying them to Hawaii, buying them tickets to see Madonna, in exchange for actually promoting their products. This, I think, by, by actually sort of focusing so much on bribery, and actually using this to sell unsuitable antidepressants shows GlaxoSmithKline's ruthless focus on sales and a callous disregard for patient welfare. Indeed, GlaxoSmithKline was breaking the law in order to put profits before patients. That major staple of the big pharma was, are prepared to mislead the public, selling drugs for unapproved uses when we have very little idea of the risk they might cause, whether that is for those suffering from dementia, offering a false help by Ellie Lilly's Zyprexia, or vulnerable children being destabilised by GlaxoSmithKline's strong antidepressants that are only be cleared for use against adults. I think the pharmaceutical industry has uh, displayed a, regard, a disregard for patients in recent years in order to make sure they're selling these highly profitable drugs. So what do we have here? We have an industry that has first been unwilling to develop drugs for rare diseases if there's no possibility of making profit. Second, been unwilling to test existing drugs on new illnesses if there's no patent protection and therefore no potential for huge profits. Third, an industry that has resisted the release of negative test results, which has meant that we, the taxpayer, have both spent money on and relied upon drugs which were not as good as we thought when we bought them. Fourth, these companies have done little to help developing nations, charging the maximum which they can still make sales, and sometimes using a lack of regulatory oversight to even charge more. 
And fifth, Big Pharma has, in the past 20 years, systematically engaged in the mis-selling of drugs by encouraging sales staff and bribing doctors to promote drugs at unapproved uses, giving patients full soap at best and costing them their lives at worst. Thus, Big Pharma, when it has to make a choice, prefers making money to saving lives. Profits over patients, yes, I'm afraid so. And thus, I urge you to support side proposition tonight. Thank you.